Tina Turner once sang a song, what's love got to do with it? And that's what I'm using today. I'm asking the question, what's love got to do with it? There are many things in the good book that are hard to understand. Some things are just downright perplexing, if we're honest. It seems though, the older I get, <clears throat> the more simple some things are becoming. Especially the red words. Yes, the red words of Jesus himself. For instance, Matthew 22, 34 through 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Simple to understand, right? That is, assuming you know who God is and you know who your neighbor is. Oh, we're not sure who our neighbor is. Well, there's this other story Jesus tells of a man hurt on the side of the road. Seems like a couple of preachers or deacons or something came by but didn't bother to help much. But then a member of a group that those religious people that came by pretty much hated stopped and helped the man. Even went a little overboard according to some standards. That guy, he's your neighbor, says Jesus. Love him as you love yourself. Okay, I see now. A little clearer. But... What exactly does that love that I'm supposed to have for even some that I'm probably still unsure about entail? How far do I go with it? Jesus says, love them like yourself. Simple enough. But Lord, sinners like that are supposed to be turned around, right? And it's up to me to do it, right? Otherwise, I might be in trouble too, right? After all, I can't give what was meant for me to the little dogs, right? What about the faith of the little dogs? Does that matter? Oh yeah, they like to eat of the crumbs of the master's table just the same as me. It seems like most of what Jesus talked about revolved around love. Here again, pretty simple. And you would think most, most people have a pretty good handle on the definition of the love Jesus talks about. If you're not sure about your own definition of love, let's look at what a fellow wrote in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. Now listen close. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Yeah, yeah, I've heard all about the love stuff in that chapter. I've heard it a lot at weddings and such. But every now and then, don't you think we churchgoers, especially those sinners a little worse than I am, need a little fire and brimstone? A little wrath of God type stuff. You know what I mean. Hold the phone now. That stuff has to do with fear, right? But I thought love trumped fear. I really believe that love does trump fear. As a matter of fact, I'm beginning to see 
that love trumps everything else. I'm beginning to believe that loving is the most important thing I can do in my life. <clears throat> now with that in mind, let's go back to simplicity. Let's start out, if we can, with small stuff. Practice love on the one who just turned left in front of you. Or the one who hurried and got to what seemed to be your parking spot at Walmart. Hmm, tough already, isn't it? Coming from someone who argues with his wife sometimes, though I love her more than life itself. So, that lets me know I can't do it on my own. No way. Jesus has to help us on our road to unconditional love. There's no way around it. My own self-worth, self-righteousness, love of self always gets in the way. For myself, and maybe you too, if I, we, can't see that God loves all his children, then I, we, have a serious problem. Because if God loves us all, then we might ought to love us all too. I'm just throwing that out there.